isn't March just such a beautiful month? It's late March. I never used to like hellebores. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I always look down on them from above. But when you look underneath, they are the most incredible, beautiful flowers. This is another hellebore. A double one this time. Sitting here under my plum tree amongst the hyacinths. I have those before Christmas every year. I plant them out in the garden, they just keep going. This is this pollen area which the bees love. Primroses, and that's the stem of my plum tree. And about some more hellebores again. So it looks like I'm going to have hyacinths for a good while to go yet because this one is only just beginning to show the first blue from blue to red and these peony shoots amaze me every year when they come up. I planted them 15 years ago and I'm still staggered every time at this incredible colour. I lived in South Africa for a while and one of my most vivid memories of daffodils is passing our local flower shop where there were bundles of daffodils and I would go across to smell them because I miss them so much and they were labelled as exotic flowers. This is the remains of a, a previous year's blackbird nest. Um, it's gradually fallen apart. But further around in here, you can't see it, it's so beautifully hidden. I've been watching the female blackbird going in and out, in and out, with lots of material to make a new nest. So I'm gonna go away and leave her to it. The Obrisha looks wonderful at this time of year as well. And this one is uh, overflowing from the planter into this pot at the base of my magnolia stellata. It's like a wave of purple. And if I bring you in closer, the magnolia has these amazing furry buds. The roses are well into leaf. And again, we see this beautiful shiny red this time in the new growth of my rose, generous gardener. The chard that I planted early autumn last year, they're looking really lush now, putting on a lot of new growth. More beautiful colour. And over this way, there's the sorrel. Um, one variety at the back called Shavel, which is a heritage variety. And that'll keep producing greens now, right the way through the summer to the autumn. And this one is the red veined sorrel. See the dead stems in front of it there. The red veined sorrel. It doesn't taste as nice but it looks really pretty in a salad dish. It won't be long now before my crown imperials are in bloom as well. They've put on an amazing amount of growth in the last couple of weeks. There are still the last few purple crocuses in the sheltered areas here on the patio and this lovely little tulip, red riding hood. is one of the flowers I've explored using my USB microscope. So you can have a look at my gallery page with some of those images. As you can hear from my voice, I'm quite croaky. I've been struggling with chest issues, so I've really done very little outside. So here we have a shot of my shoe fly flower seed heads still lying there in the garden in between the jet fire and our city. They're like little lanterns. They're like the um, Fusalis fruit that I grow. You can uh, get some fruit salads sometimes, or maybe Chinese lanterns. One of the things I love to do is to go hunting for the just the little delights, this tiny little anemone blonde. Um, it's the only one out at the moment around in the back garden. This glorious blue. And now I'm down here with my head in the flower buds at beds. I can actually see around the corner here um, that the potentilla is uh, coming into leaf now as a relative of the strawberry which is why the leaves look quite, quite similar. My big blousy red poppy is putting on lots of growth as well, a big fountain of flowers and right next to my new fritillary. It's a short one now but it's not doing badly at all for its first year. 
I don't know how tall it will get or if it's just this is this is the size for this particular variety. One of the jobs I was determined to get finished over the winter, which took me I think five or six different goes, was pruning back this bay tree which was really beginning to take off. I brought it back down to its nice little lollipop shape again. Something a little less cheery. We had some really cold weather this winter which we haven't had for a few years and the snow built up very very quickly on my rosemary and broke off a lot of the branches and you can see here at the base that big one just snapped off and I've pruned it right back leaving some of the green so I'm hoping that some of that will survive but I may well have to take it out and this is my tea tree bush also got the frost Last time this happened, a few years ago, it actually grew back from the base, so I'm a little more hopeful on that one. And underneath this pile of rosemary prunings is my French tag, and I haven't looked yet to see whether there is anything in there. There's Lelliette in there. Nothing. Something I did manage to do was to get the tree pruning finished. So this is my uh, pink pearl apple that I took from a, a graft a few years back and next to it beaver seedling. This is a tree that was developed in the Victorian times at uh, Beaver Castle which is only a couple of miles from here. Neither of them are fruited yet so I'm keeping my fingers crossed for this year. My land crest is spreading madly. I think I'm going to have to rein that in a little bit but that's really juicy. I've been enjoying that in salads for the last month or so. It tastes a, a bit like watercress. It's really delicious. Here's another furry bud. This time this is quince leaves. And behind them you can see some tete-a-tete -tete narcissi and um, a blueberry in a pop. And also a cold frame. The brassicas are going to seed now they've finished for the year and they haven't really got much size on so I should be able to have been eating some of these very small shoots in salads. Um, this, is, this kale has gone to seed and that will produce bright yellow flowers if I leave it there. I planted the garlic back in November and that's going really well now. That needs a real cold to develop well so I'm very hopeful for that this year. I'm going to give you some corn in a minute. You'd think they hadn't been fed for months, so I do this every time I come out. That's better. Corn and mealworms, delicious. They're undercover at the moment because of the bird flu outbreak, so by law they have to be separated off from the wild birds. Hopefully when the weather improves they'll be able to go back in their bigger pen. One of the few jobs I have been able to do lately is weeding this little bed. It's just annuals, so I was able to kneel beside it, pull them all out, and then the next day I transplanted in these lettuces which I'd sown from seed last autumn. They're looking quite good, despite the fact we had a quite hard frost the day after I put them out. And under glass there's more lettuces and rocket, which is making a bid for escape. That's going to need to have the glass taken off soon. That was sown last last summer as well. I sowed foxglove seed when we first arrived in this garden and they're everywhere now so I just take out the ones I don't want and they're putting on some lovely growth. I love the fact they sell seed because they often pop up in places where I couldn't get anything else to grow. And right next to this foxglove rosette is a black currant bush that I took from a cutting last summer. In fact I think I did a video of that so I'll be able to add this in as well which is really nice. Yeah, and there are five of those now in this bed. Which is actually not looking too bad. I think I managed to weed that late last autumn. These big bushy green growths are snowdrops. This is the time to dig those out and spread them out. They prefer being moved when they've got the leaves like this just after they finish flowering. And then there's the rest of the raspberry bed which has had no pruning at all. I haven't mind, it's still growing. And the chairs stored from the winter. <laughs> oh, I have to move those before they get grown in. The gooseberries are well in leaf now as well and more blackcurrants in front of them than the primroses. 
We need to do some work there on staking. I think the poles have got a, a bit rotten, so I think we need to get rid of those. But that's not something that's likely to happen anytime soon. We also have lots of leaf mould. It's been sitting there for a couple of years. I got um, a compost sieve so that I can break down what's in the bottom. Some really nice, fine seed cutting compost. So I was a bit disappointed not to have the energy to do that this year. Um, but there'll be more of it rotted down when I get around to it. And if we look over here, there's a black bird in the background. Ladybird. This is a great place for insects. This will be absolutely heaving with life for the leaf mould. My comfrey patch. That's a job I can do maybe later on, is pulling up those old stalks to make this space for the mould. This was a big job I definitely wasn't up to, so I sat on a chair and did some directing while Simon learned how to prune a buddleia. This was about eight feet tall. We do this every year, buddleias are so vigorous. You take them down to about this height in February, March time, ideally before they start sprouting again. It keeps them under control and you get flowers at a reasonable height rather than waving high above your head where you can't see them. Ooh, barbs through as well. It's like a, a concertina, like the leaf just gradually opening out, a more brilliant red. Next to it I have my rhubarb forcer. Um, this theoretically should come through a bit sooner because it keeps it warmer, but more importantly it keeps the light out. So if I take the lid off, you can see that those spikes coming up are pink rather than red. What this will do is that the stems will grow much taller and more tender as they try to reach up the light as they reach near the top. I'll take the lid off and let the leaves out. It's much, much sweeter, nicer, this sort of rhubarb. And next autumn I shall put the forcer on the other plant so each one has a, a chance to have a year when it's, it's not stressed like that. And then behind there's my one of my globe artichoke plants coming, looking nice. That's the first time that's actually been a decent size, that one. And simply out of the need for honesty, there's my greenhouse. Unfortunately over the winter I've just put things in um, and in the doorway rather than keeping it nice and tidy I simply have not had the energy to put anything away. So I think that's a, a job I'll probably come and do a few minutes. I've already started doing a few minutes each day putting things away and moving them around. It'll be ready by the time it's needed. Inside now this is the lemongrass that I grew from supermarket stones last year. Little tatty looking, but they've survived their winter quite well, so those can go in a, probably outside in a pot over the summer, pick them up a bit. I managed to sow my tomatoes over a couple of sessions, and these are all my chilli plants, which I started off in the propagator, like these ones. Ooh, I think that one's called Fairy Lights, and at the back is Friar's Hat. They're not quite ready for potting on yet, they're a bit small. And they're sitting on a tray, you can see it plugs in and just provides gentle heat underneath for the more tender seeds. And these are the potted on chilies into a pot, doing nicely now.